Now the 2022 season is six races old, but it is still not mature enough to predict who is going to win the titles this year. Ferrari appeared to be the dominant team at the beginning, but Red Bull bounced back to its normal rhythm within the first few races, being the greatest threat to Ferrari's dominancy this season. Due to the reliability issues of the RB18, they had to go through several retirements, which helps Ferrari drivers to maintain a healthy lead over its main rival in the championship battle. Both the Ferrari drivers were unable to maintain that lead after several loose races that cost the lead over its rival. Leclerc is lucky enough to clinch the pole position on Saturday in many Grand Prix, but he is not good enough in converting them into a victory on Sunday. Carlos Sainz arrives at Ferrari as their wingman in the last season as the Marinello-based team favors Leclerc as their main driver. But surprisingly, Sainz finished the 2021 season in fifth position in the driver's standings, two positions ahead of Leclerc. Now Ferrari is with the strongest car in the grid in terms of pace and reliability, several miles ahead of its rivals. Unfortunately, Sainz has failed to live up to the expectations with poor performances and constant crashes. Because of all those reasons, Ferrari has slipped into the second position of both the driver's and constructor's standings at the end of the Monaco Grand Prix, with the possibility of losing both championships to Red Bulls. Old emperor of the turbo-hybrid era, Mercedes has solved their porpoising issue to a greater extent when they come to Barcelona, and George Russell still has the chance of being a threat to the driver's title, if their upgrades are capable of unleashing the full potential of the W13. Red Bull's wingman, Sergio Perez, is slowly turning out to be the biggest surprise of the year as he is now appearing to be a possible championship contender. Last time we saw a rivalry between Red Bull and Ferrari was 10 seasons ago, when Sebastian Vettel and Fernando Alonso fought for the driver's title. Time has passed away slowly. Now Vettel is driving for Aston Martin and Alonso for Alpine. But the sparks are rising from the ashes again, and now it's the time for a fight between Austrian bulls and Italian horses again. At the end of the Monaco race, the whole paddock was heated up with the Ferrari's post-race protest. They requested to disqualify both the Red Bull drivers, complaining that they have breached the rules during the pit lane exit. Monaco Grand Prix is held on the streets of Monte Carlo, which is full of various types of road symbols. According to the complaint, both Perez and Verstappen were alleged to have breached pit exit procedure when crossing the white-yellow at Monaco due to the various street markings line when leaving on slick tires in damp conditions. This was similar to the breaching of the pit lane exit rule by Alfa Tori rookie driver Yuki Tsunoda during the 2021 Australian Grand Prix. Finally, stewards had to go for a post-race hearing to solve the issue. Sergio Perez's incident was not seen by the television, but Verstappen appeared to be very close to the line as he collected a snatch of oversteer on the tight inside line of saint Devote on his cooler tires. But the footage from the onboard view of Charles Leclerc was inconclusive enough to prove Red Bull as guilty of the case. It was clear that Verstappen didn't cross the line even though he had traveled along it. But if he crossed the line at a certain point, it was enough to give a 5 second time penalty. According to the race director Eduardo Freitas' event briefing guidelines, it was mentioned as follows. In accordance with Chapter 4 of Appendix L to the ISC, or International Sporting Code, drivers must keep to the right of the solid yellow line at the pit exit when leaving the pits and stay to the right of this line until it finishes after Turn 1. But for the 2022 season, it was changed as follows. Except in cases of force majeure, any line painted on the track at the pit exit for the purpose of separating cars leaving the pits from those on the track must not be crossed by any part of a car leaving the pits. This wording change was not something introduced by new race director Niels Wittich or Eduardo Freitas, but during the period of former race director Michael Massey. The Ferrari protest was not wrong according to the race director's event briefing statements. But this new change allows the cars to run along the pit exit line without crossing the line, as long as one whole tire does not cross over onto the live racetrack. Here, the problem was the race director's event briefing guidelines are wrong, and it was not updated according to the recent changes made to the ISC. In post-race hearing of a certain issue like this, the power of ISC is always ranked above the race director's event briefing guidelines. So, the advantage of the issue was with Red Bull and stewards concluded that Red Bull hasn't breached any rule during the pit lane exit. In this case, the car did not cross the line. To do so, it would have needed to have a full wheel to the left of the yellow line, the stewards said. 
Accordingly, the driver did not breach the relevant section of the code, and this takes precedent over any interpretation of the notes. The protest is therefore dismissed, and the protest fee is forfeited. If Ferrari was able to convince that Red Bull has made a mistake, they will surely cost some important points in their championship battle. But it will affect hugely on Verstappen as stewards confirm that Perez's car was well inside the line. Stewart said that Ferrari conceded that car 11 did not have any part of its front or rear tires on the left of the yellow line, and conceded that the protest was unfounded, resulting in the same dismissal. If Verstappen was given a penalty, current standings will surely change, giving the lead back to Leclerc. That's why Ferrari protested as soon as the race was finished. Race director Eduardo Freitas also explained that the mistake was caused due to the cut and paste of the rules from the 2021 version of the rulebook. It is very disappointing to see that such minor mistakes made by the responsible personnel, like race directors, as such one mistake of a word can cost a race victory or even a championship for a team. Last year, Michael Massey's decision cost the eighth driver's title of Lewis Hamilton. Now the Ferrari's protest exposes another weakness of race directors. If they don't avoid their mistakes sooner, teams will surely lose their trust on the race control. When Ferrari is on the top, Formula One is full of drama and chaos, making it more interesting for the fans. They were silent for a few years until they built a car that can challenge the titles. Now, everything is in place for Ferrari to win a championship after years, but the question is whether Leclerc or Sainz is capable of blending their skill with the technology to unleash the full potential of the car. If it happens in time, we can expect more battles between Ferrari and Red Bull when the season gets mature.